the future creators of a Donald Trump presidential library may someday include a walking tour of key New York City locations connected to the rise of the 45th president. It would include obvious sites like Trump Tower, along with the president's boyhood home at 8,515 Wareham Place in Jamaica Estates, Queens, which recently sold for $2.14 million and was listed on Airbnb for $725 a night. We'll also need to include two sites, 29 Howard Street, 4D, in Soho, and 377 Union St. in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn, that belong to Trump's former campaign manager, Paul Manafit. The homes appear in the forfeiture section of the federal indictment of Manafit, who is facing 12 counts of conspiracy, money laundering, making false statements and failing to disclose his status as the agent of a foreign government. Manafit, according to the indictment, bought the properties with cash wired from a bank in Cyprus, in violation of banking laws that require disclosure of such transactions. He took out a mortgage on the Soho condo by falsely claiming the unit would be a residence for family members, according to the feds in reality, he rented it out on Airbnb. A mortgage on the Union Street brownstone was allegedly equally dodgy, according to the feds. Manafit allegedly bought the place for $3 million in cash, then took out a $1.5 million loan with the stated aim of pushing the estimated value of the property up to $8 million. The upgrade may or may not have happened, Manafit allegedly diverted the money to yet another property, in California, but New Yorkers can thank him for contributing to the perennial shortage of affordable housing. Manafit, who has pleaded not guilty to the charges, enjoys the presumption of innocence, although it's worth noting that 93% of federal criminal indictments end in conviction or a guilty plea. Political journalists and the public at large owe a great debt to New York's sturdy core of real estate reporters, who for years have diligently probed, publicized and explained shifty real estate transactions involving various Trump officials, including the president himself. The reporting provides valuable insight into the methods and morals of Team Trump, as well as a plausible motive for their undisclosed dealings with foreign sources of wealth. Journalists at Bloomberg News spilled the beans on 40 Wall Street at the height of the 2016 campaign, reporting since Donald Trump took over 40 Wall Street in 1995, prosecutors have filed criminal charges against at least 29 people connected to 12 alleged scams tied to the building. The most notorious of the operators renting space in the building was Trump University, but the building's tenants included criminals like Luis Ferreira, a fraudster who skipped town and is currently on the FBI's most wanted list, and Mark Malik, who is serving prison time for stealing $800,000 from investors. As the Bloomberg team reported at one point in 2010, according to regulators, brokers on the 34th floor were allegedly helping the financier on the 38th with a penny stock scam. A brokerage on the 17th floor was involved in an unrelated fraud and a bond trading firm on the 42nd floor was bribing a Venezuelan official to win business. More recently, Bloomberg News took a close look at 666 Fifth Avenue, the troubled commercial building owned and run by the Kushner real estate companies. The story explained why Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, has been on an increasingly urgent global hunt for big money investors. In 2006, according to the report, Kushner Coz agreed to buy 666 Fifth Avenue for $1.8 billion, then a record for a Manhattan building. All of it was borrowed except for $50 million. The company still holds half of a $1.2 billion mortgage, on which it HASNT paid a cent. The full amount is due in February 2019. Kushner, who is acting as an unpaid advisor to the president, recently made an unannounced trip to Saudi Arabia. Perhaps he was negotiating Middle East peace for the good of the world. Or perhaps he was engaged in a race to line up investors who can save his family from a catastrophic, high-profile billion-dollar foreclosure. As the dominoes start to fall on the Trump team's overseas dealings, we should all follow the old Watergate adage to follow the money, but also check out the real estate where it's flowing. Lewis's political anchor of NY1 News.